Hello and welcome. I'm in conversation with Dr. Andreas Aman this afternoon. And Andreas is the course coordinator of mathematical sciences at University College Cork. You're very welcome, Andreas. Thanks. Thanks, Jen, for giving me this opportunity. Andreas, what is the course code for mathematical sciences? So that would be CK407. CK407. Uh, and what is mathematical sciences? So mathematical sciences uh, teaches you how to analyze problems and formulate uh, solutions mathematically. So you will be using, um, continuing from what you learned in the leaving cert, you will be using mathematics to either for its own sake, uh, discover new mathematics or apply the mathematics to different areas. Um, for example, financial maths or physics or any other things, um, even biology, other applications might come up. And what do you need to have in your leaving cert are in the exam that you're doing prior to coming to university? If you're coming from another country, it may not be the leaving cert. What subjects do you need to have to, com to, to access the course and to complete it? So you should have some background in uh, mathematics, obviously. Yeah. Um, it helps also to have a background in maybe applied mathematics or physics, but it wouldn't be required. Um, much of this also depends on what directions and interests you would have. Um, in general, probably um, a strong, uh, if you enjoy mathematics and uh, you will be uh, in the right place here. Tell me, what do people, Understandably, you take a degree in mathematical sciences. It's a four-year degree, am I correct? It is a four-year degree, that's correct, yes. Mathematical sciences at University College Cork is a four-year degree. And when the person graduates, what do they normally do? So some of our graduates um, would go on to careers uh, in different areas. So for example, that would be consultancy or banking. Some of our students would uh, become actuaries or accountants. Let's say option trading is also option is uh, possible. Quite a few of them would actually go on even to do scientific research after that and uh, continue their studies, either directly going into a PhD or doing a master's afterwards and build on that. And have you any idea of the percentage that go on to employment or to um, additional postgraduate studies? Um, I would say about 60% might go to employment and mm -hmm. 30 to 40%, I'd say, would uh, continue uh, with further studies. And while a student is um, undergoing their degree, is there any placement, work placement involved? There's no formal uh, work placement involved. We would help students to try to find summer internships. Mm -hmm. We have a couple of connections with uh, local industry partners, um, but that would be voluntary and it would be down to the initiative of the student involved to get it into contact with us or with the industry partner. So we wouldn't have a formal placement. And do you incorporate employability skills into the undergraduate curriculum? We teach, for example, skills in programming and uh, computer software. So uh, our graduates would be well equipped um, on the IT side. Uh, we teach how to give presentations uh, to a wider audience. Um, we teach how to write. Um, a little thesis at the end of the year. So all those things would serve you well in the employment uh, department. So you would uh, learn skills which uh, make you employable. In this way, uh, you, um, you would be attractive for your um, employer. And do you involve any of these employers in delivering lectures, um, for example, as guest lecturers in the program? We have, um, for example, in, uh, in statistics, we have contacts with uh, 
companies who, for example, would come in into a course and present a problem that they face so that, they, uh, that students could then work on problems which are relevant to this industry partner. Or we would have um, contacts with other industry partners, which uh, maybe, for example, help us to design uh, a course in a way so that uh, it addresses some of the needs which the industry has. I understand. So the industry is, is, is essentially presenting what are the challenges that they face so it enables them inform the, the program, the, the curriculum, let's say. Yeah, I'll give you an example. So for example, uh, quite recently, the topic of machine learning would have been uh, coming up and uh, received quite a bit of uh, attention or demand from the industry side. And we have uh, responded to this by including, including a module in this direction on the instru instruction of, uh, from industry. Uh, and uh, this is an example where the connection with industry paid off and makes students more appliable uh, in, in particular areas. And students of mathematical sciences, are there other, outside of the curriculum, are there other supports that they can avail of at University College Cork in terms of employability skills? In particular, actually, there's uh, um, quite a few um, of our students would be engaged in uh, university societies, which mm -hmm. teach quite uh, uh, a variety of, or show uh, students how to engage in a variety of skills and uh, learn those skills. So that are options, which maybe are not directly part of the curriculum, but down to the initiative of the students. But of course they would be, we always talk about, you know, opportunities in the curriculum, co-curricular, and extracurricular. So what you've just described is the opportunity for self-directed learning and engagement yes. in, in, in the opportunities that are afforded the students, the students of mathematical sciences at University College Cork. Maybe we one aspect um, which also improves employability by uh, quite substantially is that students have uh, the option to take a year abroad. Um, so students often use this in the third years of studies. They might uh, take a year in Europe through the Erasmus program or in the US. Uh, that's the most common uh, destinations, but we also had people going to Shanghai or other places in Asia. Um, again, uh, this is not uh, mandatory, it's voluntary. And Andreas, do you, through the School of, Mathemat of Mathematics, and um, facilitate those connections for the students across the world? We will sort of help the students to select courses so that when they go abroad, that they would study abroad some curriculum which fits in when they come back so that the year abroad is acknowledged as a third year in our curriculum. That's a very important um, facet of the offering in Cork. Why would you study mathematical sciences at University College Cork, as opposed to anywhere else? Mathematical sciences in Cork, I think, well suited uh, to um, cover a broad area of maths. So if you are not sure yet when you start to study what you want to do, in Cork you would have all the options uh, to specialize in different areas which is possibly broader than in many other uh, universities. So um, in Cork, you could do, for example, you could, uh, after the first year, you could decide whether you would like to do financial maths, uh, or you could decide whether you would like to do a joint honors with physics and mathematics. So this would be very different areas. Um, or you could decide whether you do pure mathematics and uh, focus on uh, studying mathematics for its own sake. So all these options would be open to you. And I think the variety of what we offer is uh, quite astonishing. And uh, you wouldn't need to specialize early on. Okay. And, you know, if you look at the different areas that you mentioned earlier, like financial mathematics, what percentage of students go to the specific areas? Financial mathematics would be the most popular um, outlet degree. 
So typically about 60% of the students would choose that direction after their first year. Mm -hmm. Then about um, the, uh, from the remaining 40%, maybe 25% would choose the pure maths route and the remainder would be the joint maths and physics uh, route. Maybe I should just say that the joint maths and physics uh, degree would also be accessible for students entering through CK408. So physics, physics and astrophysics. Um, so this is a joint degree with uh, the physics department. And would a student, obviously they don't have to make up their mind about that until they have completed either the first year in physics or the first year in mathematical sciences. That's correct. Um, so, um, however, we sh uh, I should say, if you want to keep the option of this joint physics degree open, then already in the first year, you also need to take electives in physics. Otherwise, you would not be able to continue with this um, degree outlet, unfortunately. So Andreas, what are electives? So electives are modules which are not obligatory. So you can take them or not, depending on what uh, your interests are. For example, in the first year, we would have one third of the modules would be electives and two thirds would be core modules. The core modules you need to take, the electives modules you can choose from a list of about maybe 20 modules. You could choose about four modules of them to be your electives. And can you give me an example of what these electives are? Could they be in Irish history? So we have electives across a number of disciplines. Um, I'm aware of, for example, computer science and biology. Also chemistry is possible. We have um, accounting and physics. You've certainly given us a sense that, there, that, that there's a diverse array of topics that the student can choose from yes. and can also help the student consider where they may ultimately seek employment. Because if they take some areas of biology, for example, they might go into bioinformatics, for example. Yeah, there is also economics, um, which might be relevant for employment. Um, that's an option as well. If there is a company who'd like to have access to the students at undergraduate level, who should they contact? They can contact me. In mathematics, mathematical sciences are much sought after and can be key to any team in an organization because they bring, I suppose, the skills of critical thinking and um, rigorous exploration, many of the grad graduate attributes and graduate values that the university speaks about. That's what I believe that essentially when you have a degree in mathematics, you are not a specialist in any particular area, but you have the skills to quickly adapt to any environment you are thrown into. And um, this is what employers appreciate. So I, I had actually quite a few in, um, feedback from employers regarding this, that our graduates seem to be highly adaptable. And uh, they, uh, their strength seems to be that uh, even challenging situations because of the flexibility that you learn during your mathematics degree um, um, allows you to master even challenging situations. So mathematics by its nature is um, indeed something that you often do on a desk or on a computer. Um, the problems that you are dealing with might however be outside and uh, you might, for example, model the problem of populations of fish in the ocean or um, the dynamics of a disease or something else which happens outside. So the subject um, is applied to the reality in many cases and uh, thereby you, it helps, of course, if you have a specific subject at hand to also visit those places. But um, at the end, mathematics might be done on a computer and on a desk. 
I think you've explained it really, really well, um, Andreas, where you said that mathematics applies to everything. It, un it applies to understanding, predicting, mapping, you know, um, um, and, and, and as you spoke there about disease, I'm thinking of the pandemic that we're, uh, that we're being subjected to at present. There are a lot of great math mathematical minds, I think, modeling and predicting. So it, it seems, you know, coming to our, bring our, discu our discussion to a conclusion, it seems that the students can study mathematical sciences at University College Cork. They can become specialized in a particular area after the first year, depending on yep. their interests. And they have opportunities of, I suppose, acquiring employability skills as they go through the degree. And when they come out the other end, they can go on to postgraduate or go into employment. And there's some very exciting, I think, areas of employment that you've highlighted. You know, for, for example, well, the world of technology or new information technologies and, and the mathematical world and cybersecurity. So the opportunities are, are quite broad. And I think it's very refreshing to hear that the graduates are sought after, much sought after by the employers. Yes, I, I would say um, you would have a strong basis after you uh, finished your degree here. Um, and at the end, I, I would think that mathematics um, is quite unpredictable in how it plays out. Um, you might only learn or see during your degree what you are good at and what you excel at. And um, although there might be some degree of planning involved beforehand, much of it might come along as you actually start to do it. And Andreas, my final question, what area of mathematics are you in? I myself would be in applied mathematics. So I would use mathematics to solve problems, for example, in laser physics or in machine learning or even um, the dy dynamics of networks. Uh, that would be my specialty. So my specialty would be called nonlinear dynamics. That would be the technical term uh, that I would use to describe my area. Did you always intend to study mathematics? No, actually, I would have started out as a physicist and only uh, navigated towards mathematics after I did my undergraduate degree. Um, so um, in particular, applied mathematics would be very broad. And uh, um, if you think about it, mathematics probably is in most objects that you have around you, if they are anyhow technological, they would depend heavily on mathematics. Uh, I don't think there's anything which uh, has been developed in the last 50 years, which does not use a lot of mathematics to be uh, to become into existence. And um, uh, so therefore, applied mathematics would be a broad area. And uh, uh, it's one area which um, I learned to enjoy during the time when I studied physics and later on mathematics. I wouldn't have started out to become an applied mathematician after I finished my skills. So Andreas, have there ever been any very famous mathematicians associated with UCC? Yes, for example, um, actually the first uh, professor of mathematics here in Cork would have been George Poole. So uh, George Poole would be famous today as the founder of essentially informatics and uh, computer algebra and uh, because he would sort of have founded the basis of logical uh, computations. So he would have founded um, what is called Boolean algebra and uh, which at his lifetime seemed like a very curious thing to do and maybe not many people were interested in this topic but after his death, um, uh, the computer was invented and it was required to formalize the operation of computers. 
and people remembered Boole's work and read it and found that uh, Boole would have discovered the, the laws of thought governing um, essentially uh, digital computing long before and uh, they have used his work maybe 80 years after his death very successfully and since then uh, Boole would be probably very famous in, in particular, computer science. Uh, um, and for example, we would have today Boole's library. Um, and this is a nice le legacy of, uh, of uh, Cork and uh, the success of a Cork mathematician, uh, which would be today known worldwide. So it's very, it's fascinating to think that the father of the information age was indeed the first professor of mathematics at University College Cork. Yes, that's correct, yes. Well, uh, that's a very, very interesting note on which to end, Andreas. I hope that those of you who are listening to this have enjoyed the conversation and will take a deeper look at mathematical sciences at University College Cork. So thank you, Andreas, and thank you, the listeners. You're welcome, John. Employability and career development initiatives are delivered through curricular, co-curricular and extracurricular activities. Over 90% of our programs offer placements internationally and nationally. Throughout your time in UCC, you will have the opportunity to develop employability skills through entrepreneurship modules, skill sessions and memberships of club societies, becoming a class representative and getting involved. Throughout your student journey, UCC Career Services will support your career planning with one-to-one -one career consultations and coaching. The Career Services collaborate with academic departments and other UCC units to deliver bespoke and standalone employability and career-related workshops and events for all students and recent graduates. Our annual recruitment fair is one of the largest national career fairs featuring up to 100 top graduate employers. For more information about UCC employability initiatives and the career services, visit ucc.ie forward slash careers. <laughs>